Hi guys, and thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through a time-lapse of this image. Okay, so I'm gonna start by drawing some really bad hands. Hands are something that I've always struggled drawing, so I've never actually put the time in to get any better at them. It was really nice to sit down and try and tackle a couple in this piece. There are a few different ways to draw hands, and I think I pretty much tackled every single one of them trying to find my rhythm. There's something about trying to capture an emotion with just the hands which really pushed me to get this right. I was using all types of structural concepts to make sure I get every single bone and every single finger in exactly the right place. I actually ended up getting a little bit frustrated and having a break. When I came back, I decided to treat this as a hand study, or a warm-up just to make sure I didn't stab myself in the face with my Apple Pencil. Eventually I decided to sit back and actually think about the kind of composition I wanted to go for. Looking at my own hands, I decided it's probably best to get into character a little bit to aid my creative process. Kind of went like this. After I eventually decided what kind of composition I wanted to go for, I ended up studying my own hand. Having a solid concept in mind and my own hand as my ally, take that how you want, I was on a roll. Finding rough shapes and structures is usually the first step. I rough parts in to make sure my hand is doing its best at trying to get what's in my brain onto the canvas. At this stage it does look quite terrible, but that's okay because you start very loose and then gradually build up some layers to eventually add some detail. So now the next step, I added a layer over my initial rough sketch. Because I now know where everything is going, I can start thinking about what those elements are actually going to look like. I decided that I wanted the whole thing ascending out of some weird, sticky, gloopy sh**. At this point, I wanted a surge of light blasting from this guy's forehead. I figured having another light source right in the centre of his forehead would add a little bit of drama. Having a central light source reflecting off the other elements in the image would be perfect for the kind of mood I was trying to accomplish. So, refining some more shapes, drawing in some fingers, Removing them, drawing in some fingers, removing them, drawing in some more fingers, removing them, and over and over and over again, redrawing that f***ing hand. <sighs> again, I got a little frustrated. I ended up starting again, after I'd drawn a f***ing balls on the page, just to lighten the mood a bit. <sighs> so now with a distant hand in place, and drooping some gloopy I was back on track. Plonking another layer on my second sketch, I decided that this was a time to actually put in some lines. But to be honest, I wasn't actually sure if I was going to include lines in the drawing. I still hadn't actually decided if I was going to have something that was a bit more illustrative looking or something that was a bit more realistic and treat it like more of a painting. Further along, I decided that I was probably going to keep the lines in just because I think the file, the line drawing itself, would be really useful in the future. As I'm adding in more and more detail, I'm trying to develop some basic shading just so I can start looking at the depth I'd like to achieve in the end result. I'm also looking at places some lines where I think textures would look interesting, bearing in mind not to overdo it at this stage because some of the detail is going to be added in the final shading and colouring stage. When I started putting together this sticky, gloopy sh** bath this guy's trying to ascend out of, it was really important I paid attention to the areas pulling away from the fingers and the hand to make sure I get that separation there in the foreground. A wider, stronger structure at the base means it's more likely to stretch, and a thinner, weaker structure at the top means it's more likely to sort of split and tear. But I don't know why I'm doing all this. Anyway, I stuck with that kind of concept throughout. A lining layer was added and I started actually placing down the black marks and messing around with them a little bit. This means that it would solidify the whole thing and sort of give me a working line drawing for the future. You can see how all of the procrastinating and experimentation is a really important part of building a foundation for me to work from. Um, by this point, I mean, the lining is actually quite steady, quite easy, because most of the hard work's done. Once the lines are complete, you can see I added a single tone of grey underneath the lining layer. This enables me to start shading over the top of that without having to worry about the tricky mid-tones, and it sets a good foundation for the colour work to come. Whenever I'm shading, I'm always thinking about how light is going to interact with the texture and the shape of the subject, but in order to do that, I need to know where the light source is coming from. I had already decided that I wanted a light source coming from the forehead, but I also wanted to add a light source coming from the left and from the right, something more ambient and a little bit sort of reflective. Uh, this would give it more of a physical position in the, in the scene itself. You can see how I've left areas behind the skull and like on the back of the wrist on the right hand side to accommodate for that kind of thing. 
just to quickly say as well, if anybody wants a video on shading and to sort of go into a bit more depth as to exactly how this kind of thing is achieved, please just drop a comment below. Okay, so once the shading's down, it's time for the fun bit. Colour. I added a layer on top of the entire image and then filled it with a colour. I then started messing around with the opacity and layer settings just to sort of give the entire image an undertone. Again, if you guys want to learn how to use the layers and layer settings, just drop a comment below and I'll do a video on that for you guys. After using some colour to separate the skin and the gooey sticky shit, I thought it'd probably be best to try and start adding in some detail now and really start bringing it to life. You can see me experimenting with the colours and the hues. I really wanted to have that gloomy, creepy effect, but also add some warmth and have it glow. It was very tricky. I really loved the way that the deep low chroma blue interacted with the bright purple. Uh, it, it just really appealed to me, I just really liked the look of it, so I ended up sticking with it. Those extra light sources I mentioned earlier are starting to come into play now. I used the background colour as a reference, warmed it up a little bit, and then started adding it to the distant hand and the gloopy shit. I could already see just by adding this that I wasn't going to regret making that decision. It really started to add like another dimension using that bit of extra colour and light. Uh, and on the other side as well, I used more of a magenta colour just to sort of give it another dimension. I really like the way those two colours interact with each other. The last couple of steps was to get that energy coming from his head glowing a little bit and I also wanted to create a glow coming from the inside of the skull and the way to do that was obviously show it through the eyes it adds that bit of uh, mysticism I filled in the lightning with a real pale green and then added another layer and started pasting some green over the top of that again using those funky layer options that I mentioned earlier it really gave me the effect that I wanted and then once that was done it was just a case of finding the right texture for the background there we go sorted even though through this entire process it looked like I knew what I was doing I can assure you it was a huge learning curve for me. Absolutely there are things I'd change about it, but I think that mainly would be the way I approach it next time. And I probably wouldn't add as much detail. Mainly because when you look at the image as a whole, you can't actually see some of the work I've got in detail wise. You have to get really close, which is a bit of a shame. But overall, I am super happy with it. It turned out great. Um, I can't wait to get onto the next one. I'm probably gonna do two more similar sort of things, so. Uh, which I've already started, so keep your eyes out for that. It's also really nice that a few of you really like it too out there. Thank you so much for buying prints already. Um, the profits have been donated to the NHS now to help with the current pandemic situation. If you guys would like a print sending out, please jump onto the store on my website. I'll put a link below. Um, creating videos is something I'm still very new to, so if you guys have got any feedback with regards to the quality of the editing and the content, please just let me know. And um, Also, if there's anything you guys want me to cover, whether that's sort of procreate, drawing, art, painting, please just shout up, uh, whack that subscribe button, click the notification bell, uh, and I hope everybody's keeping safe and look after each other out there. I'll see you next time.